What historical event could be described as a brew moment? Sugar plantation owners in Hawaii bringing mongooses to the Hawaiian Islands to deal with rat infestations, only to realize the mongoose hunts during the day and sleeps at night, while rats are the complete opposite. It was an epic fail. Geez, sounds like Australia with the cane toads. They brought them in to eat the cane beetles but the beetles live several feet up the sugar cane, out of the reach of the toads. Cane toads are now a bigger problem than the beetles ever were. Good news is that rats have figured out how to get around the poisonous parts of the frog to eat the heart and such. When the CIA seriously considered assassinating Castro via a mollusk filled with explosives, my favorite was when they tried to give him special cigars laced with chemicals that would make his beard fall, and the Cubans would lose respect for the now beardless Fidel Castro and rise up and overthrow. Hi Monsieur. CIA plots sometimes remind me of a game of cards against humanity. The Ides of March, aka, Caesar gets vibe checked by the Roman Senate. A2, Bruti, I'm ashamed of you. When Costa Rica attempted to declare war on Germany during WW2 but Germany couldn't even find Costa Rica on the map and nothing happened. Asterisk Costa Rica declares war Asterisk Germany, I don't even know who you are. An unknown player has declared war on you, when a dude moved a briefcase and it caused Hitler to live. And when he did not have time to put in the last explosive. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and GT, Franz Ferdinand's death was painful for a lot of other people. I don't know, I think it was pretty painful for him too. When Alexander Hamilton shot his shot into the air against Aaron Burr, then Aaron Burr killed Hamilton. I recall reading somewhere that it was generally considered gentlemanly to not actually try to kill your dueling opponent. This is mostly true. Dueling by this point had been largely understood to be unnecessarily brutal. However, it was still seen as an acceptable form of settling differences and had developed into a symbolic interaction. It was implied that most duels wouldn't end in death, but Burr didn't follow this trend. When Caligula was thought to be on his deathbed, a few senators that basically said, take me God, not our beloved emperor, to be all dramatic were met by a recovered Caligula so they could explain why they haven't killed themselves yet to finalize the payment. Wasn't he the guy that also declared war on the sea? Or am I thinking of another emperor? That's Cal He was said to have declared war on Neptune, then had his soldiers collect shells. So, that would mean that this is the ocean's brew to the Romans edit, typo. Jean Bernadotte being invited to become king of Sweden. Napoleon asking him to never attack France when he's king. Jean being like, nah bro I'ma go full Swede from now on. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte went full Dutch. That was his brother, and he hated the role he had to play. So, uh, on our way back we stopped by Elba. And, uh, we picked Napoleon up and brought him back to France. The sailor wheedled, wringing his dump hat in anxious hands. The Duke of Wellington raised his hands to the bridge of his hawkish nose, closed his eyes and sighed deeply. Brew, he breathed at last. Eli, F okay, Napoleon Bonaparte seized power in the days after the French Revolution, Republic by being the successful general, becoming the Emperor of France. He waged a ton of wars against most of Europe, which made him less than popular with, well, Europe. Eventually, he betrayed his ally, Spain, putting his brother Joseph Bonaparte on the Spanish throne, making the Spanish people very very angry. This prompted the British to send a force to their ally, Portugal, led by Sir Thomas More and then my man Sir Arthur Wellesley. Sir Arthur fight fight fights his way across Portugal and then Spain, and then eventually France whereupon Napoleon is ousted and exiled to Elba, a tiny island. Years pass, and a frigate swings by Elba to pick up the Emperor in Elba, and then delivers him to France. 
where he pulls a, mir pulls a miracle out of his hat and takes France back over with practically no resistance, raises a huge ass army, and has everyone declare war on him because Europe is 110% done with his shit. Napoleon marches on Brussels, the capital of Belgium, only to be stopped by Sir Arthur, now the Duke of Wellington, and Field Marshal Blucher of Prussia, north of a town called Catrabras and south of a little town called Asterisk Asterisk Waterloo Asterisk Asterisk. Despite being outnumbered, Wellington resists Napoleon's attempts to kick his ass long enough for Blucher to show up and form the foundations of one hundreds of years of French-German dislike of each other. Napoleon gets exiled again but this time to St. Helena which is in the middle of nowhere where he dies of cyanide poisoning from damp wallpaper. Edgar Allan Poe wrote the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket in which four survivors of a ship sinking draw straws and decide to eat a guy named Richard Parker in order to survive. Years later, a ship sank and four survivors decided they would have to eat one of their number in order to survive. This turned out to be, surprise surprise, a cabin boy named Richard Parker. Poe just happened to write a story that seemed to predict real-life events. That, or a novel called Asterisk The Wreck of the Titan, or Futility Asterisk about an ocean liner called Titan hitting an iceberg and sinking. The events of the novel were noted as eerily describing events very close to the real-life sinking of the Titanic. The novel came out over a decade before the real Titanic sunk, and described events such as sinking in April and there not being enough lifeboats. I think he also wrote Eureka, which predicted a bunch of science -y stuff that was only recently confirmed. Brew, William Henry Harrison, having the longest inauguration speech out of any president and then dying the month into his administration. When Chiquita started to control a lot of Latin American countries and even ordered the assassination of many workers because they were in strike. Hence the term, Banana Republic if I'm not mistaken. That's not India, Christopher. Hey, look, it's the Indians. Brew, which are pay were. Carrot, 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 or carrot, 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 whatever, carrot, 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 tribe, carrot, 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 whiz. Carrot, 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 I'm carrot, 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 sorry. He landed in the Caribbean, the sinking of the Titanic, I don't know, that was probably more blub than brew. Brew, the Venetians holding the Crusaders of the Fourth Crusade host hostage until they paid more money, having them sack cities like Zara and Constantinople. When the Pope commands you to go fight the Saracens and help out the Byzantines and you fucking sack Constantinople like a boss. Napoleon entering Moscow, anyone who attacked Russia without considering the winter. When the USSR collapsed. Chernobyl, face bombs with all three hands. Oof, Trojan horse. That dude that threw his shoe at George Bush, and he was able to get his other shoe and throw that too before security could get high monsieur. Everything Kim Jong-il did when he ruled. A few examples are he made the entire country quit smoking when his doctors told him he needed to or how he made his cabinet take all the same medication he was prescribed because he was afraid of getting addicted alone. YTF he sound like an insane Karen making her kids suffer with her. Jong Il was especially insane because he was able to rule North Korea at the peak of his regime's power over the country. He enjoyed relatively secure rule and because of this he massively bumped up regime propaganda. He could literally say or do whatever the fuck he wanted. When the Germans used mustard gas on the Canadians but the Canadians used wet cloths to get through. An attack also when Russian combatants were bombarded with a mixture of chlorine and bromine gas. By the Germans they continued to attack. When the Germans who pioneered gas, submarines, and flamethrowers, 
declared shotguns to be inhumane and unfair. When the CIA implanted listening devices onto a cat to use as a spy just for the cat not to listen and get himself hit by a car on his first field day. CIA should have known cats never listen to humans. They do what they want. When the large business owners attempting to overthrow the U.S. government for a fascist dictatorship chose a super close and loyal general to lead the coup on the president. I may need more context please I'm intrigued. When Italy switched sides during the war, which more war lol, they did it twice the slimy pricks. Zimmermann telegram from the Germans to the Mexican Gov. King Pepe II of Egypt is thought to be the longest reigning monarch. He ruled for 94 years. Keep in mind that most people back then would only live a fraction of that time. Anyway, he outlived all his successors, so, when he died, there was no one to take over. A big power struggle ensued. On top of that, the Nile stopped flooding. Not a fun time. Zero tenths would not recommend. His youngest son, on his deathbed, looks upon his healthy father and sighs one final word, brew. I picture this happening to Prince Charles. I dk which one it was but they lost to a bunch of fucking birds. Australia and the Emu War. That guy that single-handedly stopped WW3 by, ref by refusing to launch missiles on a submarine. I forget the name of the guy. I think this was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Glassing Japan 2, Nuclear Boogaloo, Julius Caesar getting stabbed and looking up to see Brutus, A2, Brutus.